Good morning, y'all. So I told you that we were going to go to some yard sales. We're over here at Sylvan Park in Nashville, and it was raining like crazy. And Debbie and Greg both was like, there's not going to be any yard sales. It's not going to happen. Everybody's canceled. But it cleared up, and they're open. And we've already made our first purchase of the day. I've got Hubby with us today. He's tagging along. Debbie doesn't want to be on camera today. No. Nope. Anyway, um, we'll definitely uh, show you a haul when we get done. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. More importantly, I hope you got some rest, got to do some fun things. Um, so you just saw the clip where I told you that Debbie and Greg and I were going yard selling and we did and it was a bust. Um, it, was, it was pouring down rain when we met. And they were very negative, Nancy. It's, it's, we're not going to be able to do anything. They're not going to be having yard sales. We can drive all the way over here. And I was like, let's go. Like, I can see some clear way off. And, you know, so we went ahead and made the ride. It was probably 20 minutes, you know, from where we were at. And sure enough, the rain stopped just long enough. We got to hit about four or five places. Um, they were advertised a lot of places as having antiques and vintage, but we only found one place that had that. And they were um, a couple that had had an antique booth, it seemed like, um, because they're, the way their tags were. Uh, but it was more or less kind of a bust. Greg even only got out of the car a couple of times. You know, I think Debbie may have actually bought more than I did this time, but I'm gonna show you what we got at the yard sales. So the first thing I got was this butter mold. Um, this is my third one. And the lady had $8 on it and you could tell that it was from her booth. And she said, oh, I'll take five. So um, I snagged it up because I don't know how long ago it's been since she's had her booth, but these things are anywhere from 10 to $20. And if um, they're larger, sometimes they're even, I've seen them as high as 30. So I got this for $5 to add to my little collection. Now I like to wear a crossover purse when I'm out shopping, especially thrifting so that I have both my hands. So this, I don't know what kind of, what brand it is or nothing. The paper's still in it where it was brand new. The lady said she never used it. And so I got this for $5. I thought this would be great to use um, during the winter. And then for the yard sale, my find of the day, what I was so excited to get, um, was this star colander and it does have some dents, but guys, it was 75 cents. So even like I had just bought one a couple weeks ago at an, at an antique store, a Tennessee flea, I think. And I paid $6 for it and it had a huge dent in it, which I was able to get it out. Um, but these go like, I have seen these as high as, like, $35 because there's several, you know, the larger size. Um, I didn't even care. I think this is the exact one that I have. It's just a little bit rougher shape, maybe, but for $0.75, cents, I snacked this up. Okay, so then we were very close to the bins, the Goodwill bins. Um, Y'all, first of all, I look rough as corn cob, and I realized that. Look at my hair. I have been out foraging for food in this heat. And when I say that, I meant I had to go to the grocery store. I had a couple of errands to run. And I am just hot and nasty. But I also have a ton of homework that's due at midnight that you guessed it. I have not even started. But I wanted to get this haul done and try this video out for you guys tomorrow morning. Um, so I'm going to have to edit it. And I just didn't want to take the time to print. Because y'all don't come here to see me anyway. You come here to see the amazing thrift find. So, but... You know, in all transparency, I realized that I look pretty rough. So anyway, let's go on. As I was saying, we were so close to the bins that Debbie and I got to laugh and we were like, let's take Greg to the bins. So um, his uh, reaction was just as I expected. He kept walking behind me and just taking things. Like if I was looking at something, he would just take it out of my hand and put it right back in the bin. He uh, didn't like anything. He was very, I think, probably overwhelmed and grossed out, y'all. Um, there's, you know, the, if, like I said before, I have fun. I enjoy the dig, the hunt, but if you're not a digger, you, it's not going to be your thing. But I did get two things while I was, I got this broom and I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I kind of want to, um, put it by my fireplace. Maybe, I don't know, but I liked the handle. I thought it was really cool and it'll be cool to set out for fall. And remember when I told you last week that at the bins you pay by the pound. 
So Greg actually found one he pulled off the top, this um, Twain short stories book. So Mark Twain, Mark Twain stories. He knows I love old books and the um, the latest copyright of this book is 1900. So this book is heavy. So for the broom and the book, we paid $4. Now that is a lot for your typical um, amount that you're gonna pay for the bands, but this is a heavy, heavy book. And um, books are 59 cents a pound. So this is kind of what ran our price up. But even having said that, as bad a shape as this book is in, but I still love it, this book would have been anywhere from 10 to $15 at an antique store. Um, you know, unless you just can and you have that the, the funds to do so, then knock yourself out. Um, that's great. But if you don't, never, ever, ever buy your old books at an antique store. Um, just take time, go to the thrift stores, dig around. Even at estate sales, you can get them on half off day. I get a lot of estate, um, old vintage books and, and a lot of mine are antique books. So remember anything over a hundred years is antique. Um, and I pay, I think the most I've ever paid for a book was $4. So um, just keep that in mind. Don't pay those antique store prices unless you can. And if you can, that's great. And it's, you don't have to go out forging. <laughs> Okay, so after we left the bins, we all we parted. Greg and I wanted to go to the antiques uh, antique show in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and so we went and we paid our admission fee. And that's about all I'm gonna say about that. I hope that our fee went to a great cause. Um, then it was still early in the morning, and it was like 10:30. Greg was off. And so we're riding around, you know, just I was thinking, well, we could go home and do some projects because we have a lot of projects that we haven't even gotten started that we need to do. Um, and he, I knew he was going to say it. So if you've been with your, your person for a long time, how many of you can just, you just know exactly what they're going to say? And I was just waiting for it. He said, well, hey, you want to just ride back up to Springfield. So if you've watched my video from our road trip, Springfield, Tennessee is one of the places that we went. We spent actually half the day there. Um, it's from our house, it's about 40 minutes. And so we were in Murfreesboro, which was further um, down. So it took us about an hour to get there and we had nothing else to do. Greg wanted to go back to this, the antique barn in Springfield. He loved that place. So there we found some really good finds and I'll, let me show you those. So Greg found this for me. Many of you, if you've seen the video, you know that I did my kitchen in strawberries and it's just an, I don't know how old it is because it has a UPC code. So um, it may not even be vintage. I have no idea. It's a um, Knott's Berry Farm chocolate gypped chocolate dipped candy content cookie or something or another. I don't know, but it was really cool. It had strawberries on it and it looks old. So, um, I feel like this might've been $5 and a lot of the booths had like 10% off. Some had 20% off. Um, there was a booth even that had 50% off. So those are things, those places don't be intimidated because a lot of times, like I've never been in a place like that, that the individual booths didn't have some kind of sale going on. So, you know, always kind of go in there and look for that. Greg was very excited because he found a hobnail cream and sugar. Um, very cute. I don't know how much they were. Um, we don't always ask. We don't always tell each other. Um, I, I, I kind of want to say that they were $12 for the set, but I'm not 100% sure, so I don't know. He has been looking for pheasants this whole time, and he really wants um, gold pheasants, but he's just not had any luck. But he did find this pheasant. Now, I don't know how much this was. I don't remember. Uh, I know it wasn't much. And to me, this is not, you know, very attractive. It's not anything I would go out and buy. But it does match a pheasant picture that he got on one of our thrifting trips um, about a month ago. And we plan on using these like around the mantle for fall. So that will be a, you know, a really cool look. Um, like I said, I don't, I feel like it was under 10. Not 100% sure. Okay, so then at the antique barn, um, I had a blanket ladder 
where I have a piece of furniture that I haven't showed you guys yet because it's a project piece and we're gonna paint it. So I had the blanket ladder out in my garage and I really missed using it. Well, I have watched some YouTubers and seen some great things that they've done with vintage. So I had the idea, I put it on my front porch for, um, you know, just in the corner, just kind of to add some decor. And I got to thinking that it would, I have ice skates, black ice skates, and um, you know, I have this really cool wooden, large, huge, like from the 40s sled that I got at an estate sale. So I plan on, you know, putting all that on my front porch. And I thought, well, I should make like a little cocoa station on that blanket ladder. So I found this thermos for $5 at the antique barn. Um, I would love to be able to find a plaid one. So I'm keeping my eye out for one of those. But for $5, I thought this was a good deal. Now you all know how much Greg loves milk glass and he found this little milk glass bunny. You know, it kind of resembles the hen on a nest. So I don't know, maybe this is a bunny in a burrow. I have no idea, but um, he loved it. Now he did, this was like, I think this was like $16, but he said that um, when he's in an, like a more of a, I don't know, just a different, antique type shops that he has seen them for around forty dollars and um so he grabbed this anything milk glass greg's pretty much gonna get and then at the uh, antique barn i found um some more a red handle vintage um kitchen tool and a green handle i put all these in a crock i don't remember how much these were these were maybe three or four dollars they weren't much because i'm always really careful i won't buy these if they're over five dollars piece um and i know the booth that i got them from they were 20 percent off so i'm wanting to say they were i don't know three four dollars something like that okay so i feel like that that is all that we got at the springfield antique barn we um greg wanted to go to the tennessee flea which we had mentioned in our last video on our road trip so we went down there um one thing we bought i'm going to insert a picture of it's already uh, in its home and semi-decorated but we found a um we had seen this last time when we were up there it's just a, a wash stand like a, one of the old wash stands with the picture and the you know the ceramic porcelain tub thing I don't know what you call them. I think they are just wash stands. But anyway, we saw it when we were on our trip and I, it was $60. And I was like, I just, I don't know. I did not Google lens it. And that was not smart of me because the way that the base looked, it kind of looked like a, a nautical, like a, a ship's wheel. And I like nautical stuff, but I just don't have any in my house. And so I really didn't want it. And um, it just, I just didn't think much about it. And Greg liked it. He thought it'd be cool. So when we went back up there, I saw one in an estate sale the other day and it was $100. So I thought, well, I guess 60 wasn't bad. But when we went up there Saturday, they had marked it down um, to $40. And I was like, look, if you want it, you know, get it. But when I got it home, so I'm, I'm aggravated that I didn't Google lens it in the store. And, but I'm also glad we got it. But, um, so when I Google lens it, I found out that it's not, I thought that it was like a replica, something that, you know, I don't know, some store probably put out like in the nineties or eighties or something like that. It actually is not. Um, this particular one was made, exact one was produced in 1908 through 1914. So it is actually an antique and the more, I mean, it exact matched the picture. Um, I did find out that it's not supposed to look like a nautical wheel, that those are actually the handheld bars and the two little bars um, are missing. And then the little, uh, I saw the little things that come out from the mirror and it, I just didn't process that a piece of it was missing. Um, so the little candle holders were missing. So I realized all that after I had it cleaned up and upstairs, you know, and I showed Greg, um, now full, if those pieces were there, this thing sells on eBay for $975. Now let me follow up with saying that it's for sale 
on eBay for $975. Um, things are only worth what they are worth to the individual. So I don't know if this person will sell it for that. Uh, I saw others for 600. I saw some for around, you know, 400. And then I saw one like ours that was missing the hand tails for 20. So it's a good thing that I'm not a reseller because I'd have been really bummed that I messed up and could have had, you know, a lot of money on my hands. Um, I do think that we could probably get a, um, what do you call them? Um, are they die rods or um, those wooden skinny things? and stick in theirs and make the hand towels and just stain it to match. Like we could do that. And once I got to thinking about it, I think I have seen some little wooden candle holder things um, in bags and thrift stores and just thought they were odd. I was like, well, how would you use that? I bet I could, if I ever come across those, I'm gonna buy them because I bet that they would go to something like this. So anyway, I know that's a lot to say about this wash stand, but I'm going to take a picture and insert it. Um, I think that it turned out really cute. I'm still looking for some like vintage type um, powder puff makeup dish, something, you know, that I can kind of add to it, but it turned out pretty cute. So we got that. Um <music> But on our way to the Tennessee Flea, so let me not jump. On our way to the Tennessee Flea, guys, we passed, which I knew we would, Sweet Pickens. And I talked about Sweet Pickens and I showed some video in my last, um, in our road trip video. So, of course, we stopped there and you guessed it, it had been raining all day. So, it was even nastier than it was the first time we went. But we found some really great things. We have a desk. It's actually still in the car. Um, and it's a project piece. We have to sand it down, get some of them old off. Um, you know, just kind of give it some love and care. But we're going to put the computer on. I don't know where we're going to put it. Because right now, there's a corner in my dining room I don't show that my computer's in. I don't want the computer in the dining room. So, I have no idea where we're going to put this. But it was a great, great piece. Um... And we found, so Greg and I go our separate ways anytime. So he found the desk. Um, I, I had gotten Greg, he likes gourds and to use for the fall. So I had gotten him several gourds at an estate sale. And I found this gourd spoon ladle thing. Got that at Sweet Pickens. I got another vintage rolling pin at Sweet Pickens. Now, while we were at the antique barn in Springfield, I was seeing all kind of wooden cheese boxes and they would have the cheese, you know, stamped on the, you know, the writing and they were so expensive, like 40 to $60. And I thought they were very cool, but y'all, I'm not going to pay that. But at Sweet Pickens, I found one. It's not a cheese box. I don't really know what this, I've tried to read this and um, it's not even... I don't know. I think it's something about charcoal. There was like charcoal or something in here, but I've been wanting one of these little boxes. So, um, see, everything comes. You just have to wait. You have to wait and get the right price. Uh, he had set, now some of his things he does have price. So he had $7 on this. So $7 versus 40 for our old wooden box. I'm going to go with $7. It doesn't have the cheese word on it, but I'm okay with that. For $8, he had this, um, green, old lantern and i have a red one that's the exact same size so i'm going to put these on my front porch for christmas with the um sleigh and the ice skates and all that i think that'll be a really cute little vignette now we had been looking at these at the tennessee fleet we have one of these in red and as you've seen on my tours in my room i have several clear glass ones but we had uh, seen two of these um green oil lamps and they were both $28 at the um, antique barn, but this one was eight. Now, let me just tell you, this thing was covered in mud and caked in the grooves. It was awful. It stunk. It smelled so bad. We let this soak in Dawn dish soap um, for almost an hour and periodically would go take turns just kind of scrubbing on it. So it took us an hour to get this looking presentable, but it was a great find for $8 versus $28. At Sweet Pickens, I also got this vintage Cracker Jack 
10. I think this is going to be really cute to have out for the 4th of July. There wasn't a price on this. Like I said, some things are priced, some things aren't. I also spent some of the day Saturday looking for shiny brights. Shiny brights are um, Christmas ornaments that were produced in 1940, well, 1938 is when it started, up into the early 1950s. Um, they are breakable, you know, they're because uh, the older ornaments are, in my opinion, I don't like them. I don't like vintage Christmas, but I like the boxes and I like the vintage things so much that I wanted to have a few items of vintage out. I thought, well, I'll get a few shiny brights. No, I won't. No, I don't know if you know anything about shiny brights. If you don't, look them up. They are high as a cat's back. Um, absolutely not a box of shiny bright ornaments. It's like a full box, which is like 12 or something, you know, something like that. Um, 50 to $75 yet? Yeah, no, not doing that. So we won't have shiny brights. We did find a place that was selling them individual for like $30 a ball. No, not doing that. But it's sweet pickings. They're not shiny brights. And um, they're not even, since UPC codes were invented in the 70s, this has a UPC code. So it's not, you know, that old. But they do have, they are vintage probably. And they do have a vintage look. So I think I'm just going to keep these in the box and just kind of have them in a vignette, maybe with some Santas. That'll be cute. Um, let's see, where does that? Yeah. These are probably more like 80s or 90s, but um, y'all, there's no way I was gonna pay that for some shiny brights, like that's crazy. Now at um, Sweet Pickens, I've been wanting a magazine rack and I had bought one at a yard sale for like a dollar and was gonna paint it and I'm probably just, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but Greg found, and Greg has not liked the idea of a magazine rack, and I'm not, we didn't want to put magazines in it. I wanted to like put old books or, you know, stuff in it, like use it to make a vignette. So Greg found this one, it's huge, at Sweet Pickens, and it really just needs cleaning up, but we like the chippiness. So, uh, and it didn't have a price on it. It has a tag, but there's not a price. So um, that was a really good find. And it always helps when he likes things. And then I think the last thing that we found at Sweet Pickens was this, um, I don't know, wicker type box. It's, we've already cleaned it up. If that tells you anything, I need to clean up the inside. It's gross and it stinks and I'm pretty sure it's got mold in it. But Greg found this. He thought it would just be the shape and everything was just different. So it'd be cool to kind of add to some of the boxes that we already have. Um, as much as I love sweet pickings, I'm going to be real honest with y'all. The things that you get there <laughs> smell awful. They're probably going to have mold on them. Um, dirt. Um, mud. You name it. So just be prepared. But you get great deals. So I think that that is... No, I got one more thing at sweet pickings. So I have some really old... Well, the, the old brown uh, yarn spools... I guess, or thread spools upstairs. And I found these old scissors. Now I know these are not, these are probably vintage, but you know, um, I grew up with, you know, my mom, like everybody, we all had a set of these growing up. Um, so if I could find a wire um, flower frog, the, the kind that sort of looked like a dome, I thought it'd be cool to stick this and maybe some crochet needles or something. I don't sew. So, um, Lucille, there's no room for you. My, this room is a disaster, so she is not going to fit in here, um, to kind of stick it down in. So this will be a project. I'm going to have to look for one of those fire frogs. I also got three, this, this video is going to end up being all over the place because I got these at the antique barn. I just forgot about them. I got, um, I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Miss Minerva and William Green Hill. This was, um, a old book. Let me see. I don't remember the copyright. It was $2, which shocked me. This was a booth that had nothing but books. Um, so, and his books are original price. I've never really seen them priced reasonably in a place like that. But, um, when is the copyright? 1909, February 1909 actually has in there. I got Pinocchio. I thought this one would be really pretty during his first spring vignette. It is falling apart. Um, let's see when it is. 
all it said, so there's no copyright date. It just, I remember this now. It just says that it was manufactured in the United States, but it is an old book. And then I found the Moving Picture Boys on the Coast. I thought the cover was cool. I don't have a cover like that. Um, and the copy date on this is nineteen thirteen. So antique books are sort of a um, a problem for me. I'm gonna buy them all day long. I don't read them. I do read. I like reading, but um, you know I'm not planning on reading these. I just love that what they add to vignettes. Okay. So after we left the Sweet Pickens, we were on our way to Tennessee Flea, which great. The, I think I was talking about that. That's where I got the washstand. While we were there, Greg also got a pair of, sorry. So while we were there, Greg also got a pair of his pheasants. I guess the male and the female. So he was excited to get these. He left these the last time we were there and he's regretted it. So now he has them. I have been on the hunt for a brass horse. My daughter rides horses and um, I really enjoyed seeing people make vignettes with horses and things. And so, you know, just another thing. So she would enjoy parts of our home. I've been looking for a few horse things and I think that'll make a pretty fall vignette. So I found this brass horse at the Tennessee Flea He's very, very heavy. I was excited to get him. I've been looking at him at thrift store for thrift, looking for him at thrift stores and just not had any luck. Now these aren't brass. I don't know what these are. They have some sort of paint texture to them. They're heavy, but I'm pretty sure they're not brass, but I found this little set of birds. We have lots of birds and lots of rabbits. Um, there's a set of three and they were a dollar a piece. So particularly for spring, these will be cute. And they'll probably be setting out anyway because I tend to have lots of little animal things sitting around. I got, okay. I wanted to try to tell y'all things in order, but I don't have things laid out in order. Back at the Springfield barn, I got this masher. This was really cool. I've never seen one like this. So I thought it was cool. It was like $5. And I finally found me a creamer cow. And he was only five bucks at the Tennessee Flea. I also got a Betty Crocker cookbook because I thought that that would be really cute to display with the strawberries in the kitchen. Um, and if I do watermelons again next year, that's gonna be really cute. But then after I bought this one, I saw this one. So I found a vintage Betty Crocker cookbook, and I was very excited to get that. Um, it's very cool. I, they'll, they'll just make a really cool uh, vignette, and there's some like you know personal hand like handwriting here about some of the recipes. So that was a really good find. We're almost done, guys. So when we left the Tennessee Flea, um, we to get on the interstate. There is a um, antique store right off of the interstate. It's called. 112 antiques or something like that. We also went to that on our, it was the first one that we stopped at on our road trip. So we stopped back one more time and let's see, we got a couple of things there. Greg found another piece of hobnail milk glass. He did not have this one. Um, I think there's a cool, it just looks like it just needs an ice cream sundae sitting in it. I found, I have been looking for some sewing shelves, um, but again, that's just something that is so expensive. And one thing I'm finding is you may be in one booth and that vendor might have something, literally, I'm not exaggerating, for $50. And then you might walk into another booth and they might have it for 30. Um, so that's why I like to do a complete wrap around and then go back a second time to get any items that I wanted in case, because for one, I don't want to carry something out of a booth and forget which booth I got it at. Um, which I know the people that work there can put it back. But so I finally found some printer, uh, sewing, y'all, some sewing drawers. Um, and they were very affordable. They were $20. I was not going to get them. 
And Greg was like, that is not bad. Now, I don't know. I'm thinking about just taking the drawer out and just using it that way. The only other thing I thought of is I might could put like, I don't know, some tall things in here and just kind of have something, maybe something you know, little and some doilies coming out. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this, but I was excited to get it. Um, I'm gonna be racking my brain trying to come up with a cute way to use it. Okay, so then one of the last things I got was I got an ironstone um, vegetable cover tradition. I don't laugh at me because I know I've been fussing about Greg and all his terrains, but this is an ironstone. I was very tickled to get this. It does have a crack um, right there. You can see, I didn't even tell Greg that there was a crack because he does not like me to buy things that have cracks. But I don't mind ironstone that's cracked. And I definitely don't mind the aged, you know, discolored um, patinaed ironstone. Like, that is my favorite. Now, ironstone terrains are expensive, y'all. I've seen them go up to $200. So, this one, I guess because it is very small, it is probably a vegetable. And because of the big crack and the chip in it, this was only $20. So... You bet I snatched it up. I have no idea where I'm going to get it. I got to find it at home, but it's going to sit very proudly somewhere. Let me tell you about my day. So I was going to go to my little antique lady to um, see if she wanted boxes because, you know, when you buy things at these stores, they usually pack them really good for you in boxes. And I have a lot of boxes and she packs things. And so, you know, going to her put me in the route for my thrift stores. And I wasn't going to go, but I was like, it's right here. You never know what you're going to see at a thrift store. So I stopped at Goodwill and there wasn't anything in there. So I went ahead and went to City Thrift. Now, when I was at Sweet Pickens the other day, I had something in my hand. He had um, $10 on it. I was so ecstatic to find it. Uh, I've seen them for like $50, $60. Um, and I set it down because Greg wanted me to, sh to show me something. And it was in that little house thing. If you guys remember that video where it just looked like it had exploded and it was very hot in there. And I set it down and went over and looked at what he wanted to show me. Um, and then I just left and left the thing there. And it just hit me when I got, when we got home, I was like, oh my God, I didn't get the, the thing that I wanted. And um, so I've been kind of bummed out. Look. That just shows you that I have a problem and that I'm obsessed because I've been kind of bummed out over this thing. But, um, and it was not something I can use, but it's just cool looking. So, when I went into City Thrift, um, I was walking in and I was thinking, I wonder if I'll ever run across one of those. Now, so, I'm walking along, minding my own business, looking at the shelves. And y'all. Look what was sitting on the shelf for $5.99. Now, if you don't know what these are, they used to use them to cut cabbage. Well, that's what I think. That's what I've been told. Um, and you can see how rusty the blades are. I'm not going to use this. The checkout lady asked me what it was, and I told her, and she was like, um, you probably shouldn't use this. Well, I'm not going to, um, but how awesome is that, that it was cheaper than what he wanted, which... You know, we hardly ever find anything cheaper than him. And it was just sitting right there. My husband says it's kind of scary how I can manifest things. Um, and I do think that maybe I should go buy a lottery ticket because I am obsessing over things and then poof, there it is. So, I don't know. I We've only bought a couple of lottery tickets ever. And, y'all, this might be the time to buy a lottery ticket. Can you imagine all the thrifting adventures that we all could go on um if i won the lottery <laughs> and i completely forgot about this this is the last thing y'all at the one the antiques 112 antiques um i was we were checking out with the drawers and the milk glass and i asked the lady i said do y'all ever get metal flower frogs in and she's because i had asked them last time and they didn't have any and she's like yeah i just got one in my booth you just walked past it y'all Look, this is the second time at checkout that I have gotten my fire frogs. Um, so, and if you look at these, and another thing, it was so, it was so reasonably priced. If you look at these on eBay, like these people are crazy. Like these flower frogs are anywhere, you know, from like the little bitty ones from like ten to fifteen dollars up to like forty-five. 
you know, $65, like what in the world? And they're very dangerous. I mean, if you poke yourself, you might get hepatitis. I mean, who knows? This was only $8. Um, and I actually needed a larger size one, so I was very tickled to find that. Um, and I get very obsessed with things, so, but anyway, it, it's got a home as soon as this video goes off. All right, y'all. I hope that y'all enjoyed this haul. I'm sorry that I didn't get to take y'all with me. And the yard sailing was such a bummer. Um, that was going to be fun. But I'm really trying to push these videos out right now while I have time, while I'm off from work. They will slow down once, um, you know, once we get back into school, once I get back into school. Um, because it's just juggling work and homework. Um, I will probably go down to one, let's just say maybe one video a week. Um, so enjoy these and guys, you guys are amazing. I want to give you all a huge shout out and thank you. When I started my channel back up a few weeks ago, I had 352 loyal, wonderful subscribers. Today, I am sitting at the last time I checked 932 subscribers. So that is all you guys. Thank you so much. Keep liking and sharing if you like this content. Let's see if we can blow this up. When we reach a thousand subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway. I already have what I'm giving away. Um, and so I hope that, you know, somebody will want it. I've got to do a little research on exactly how to, the best way to do a, a giveaway is like how the best to pick a, pick someone. Um, but anyway, uh, so let's, let's hit a thousand and we're going to do this giveaway. All right, guys, it is Monday. You will probably see this tomorrow. I hope that y'all have a great rest of your week. <laughs> a great rest of your week. I have no idea if you're going to see me again. I know that Wednesday, um, I'm going to an estate sale. So who knows? There might be another video up. But anyway, thanks so much for watching and you guys have a great night. Bye y'all.